Hi, welcome to another video. So, Grok 4 recently launched, and it was quite an alright model. I mean, it did some things great, but it wasn't great at regular tool calling. For example, it didn't work as well with something like Cursor, Klein, or the general AI coders. But now, there's a new tool that is aimed just at using Grok as a coder, and this one is called Grok Kalai. Since it is built just for Grok, the system prompts and tool calling with this are actually good and make Grok quite useful as a coder as well. It works very similarly to how Claude Code works or Gemini CLI works, but this is built for Grok itself and it works that way. It is specifically built for Grok and it makes it work quite well. I can use tools to view, create, and edit files as well as execute shell commands through natural conversation. It also intelligently chooses the right tools for your requests, and it has a beautiful terminal interface built with ink. You can also integrate it into GitHub actions and workflows if you wish to do that, and it also has a non-interactive mode if you want to use that in your custom-built scripts or something like that as well. You can also create rules and custom instructions for it in order to make it work just the way you want. It doesn't have custom slash commands as of now, which can be a bit of a bummer as well. Another thing is that you can use this CLI with different models quite easily. You can add the base URL and model name and then use it with whatever model you want, which is quite awesome. Anyway, now let me show you how it works and how you can use it as well. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor, Dart. Tired of juggling tasks across different tools? Dart combines traditional project management with powerful AI features that actually get work done. Beyond organizing tasks and boards, Dart's AI can brainstorm project ideas, generate task lists, and even complete entire assignments for you. Their composer-like AI agent understands your full project context, so you can simply chat with it to create, edit, or delete tasks naturally. The real game changer is the custom agents. You can create custom agents that trigger from the built-in integrations or a N8N workflow or custom webhook for full customization. You can create a coding agent that pushes pull requests to GitHub, a marketing agent for campaigns, or a mailing agent for outreach. Then, just assign tasks and watch them get completed automatically. Plus, Dart integrates seamlessly with your existing workflow through their MCP server, connecting directly to Claude, ChatGPT, and other AI tools you're already using. Most features are completely free, with premium options starting at just $8 per month. Check out Dart through the link in the description. It might just transform how you work. Now, back to the video. First of all, you can install it quite easily with the npm install command. Once that is done, you'd have to export the environment variable for the Grok API key as well. So, just export your environment variable with the Grok API key. If you don't want to do this every time you open up your terminal and want it to stay saved, then you can go to the settings file, which is located in the home directory, and just put your API key in the JSON element there. Once that is done, you should be able to just run it with the grok command. Now, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's a lot similar to something like Claude Code or Gemini CLI. You have the prompt box here, where you can easily type in whatever it is that you want it to do. There are also some slash commands here. Let me tell you about them one by one as well. First, you have the slash help command. This shows you all the help regarding the tool. Some cool stuff is that there are actually these commands that can be run directly from the prompt box, and those terminal commands will be directly executed. Like, there's touch or ls or pwd or stuff like that as well. If we talk about the other slash commands, then you can easily use the slash clear command for clearing the context up until the current time, which is great to free up context. Then, there's also the models option. In models, you can type that and then hit enter, and it will show you the model options that you can select from. You can select between Grok 3 Grok 4, and Grok 3 Mini as well, 
based on what you want to use. Most of you would want to use Grok 4 since it is much better. So just select that, and it also defaults to that, I think. Anyway, apart from this, you also have the exit option, which you can use to get out from here. As I said, you can also run commands like touch, make directory, delete, and stuff like that as well. So that is also kind of cool. Now let me show you how you can use it as well. You can ask it to do anything. I'm going to give it this KingBench app, and I'm going to ask it to implement a simple light theme to it. What you'll see is that it will go ahead and start to work on this. Now, again, it is very similar to Claude Code, and it prompts you to approve the steps. You can also allow for all sessions and all prompts, which is good, and it is quite fast. The Grok API limit is also now better, and the tokens per minute and more such stuff are also now fixed. Grok 4 is good at coding, but it is not good at tool calling. However, this one tries to add some system prompts and stuff, and optimize a CLI tool for that. The tools and everything are optimized in order to use that. In just a little bit, it will get that done and you can see that it finished the task over here, and it is quite good. If we run it, then you can see that it did the work quite well without any issues. It implemented the stuff well, and the theme and everything works well without any issues. Most of the stuff is amazing to use. I don't find any issues with it as much. I tested it on my agentic benchmark that I'm still crafting but it stands with five questions as of now, and the Grok Cly passes two, which is similar to Gemini and Quen, which is good nonetheless. However, for the price, Grok is still not quite useful. I would have liked if Grok 4 was smaller and better, but still, Grok Cly actually makes it a bit more useful, rather than using it with things like Klein, where it does not work as well. So, that is an issue for sure. Another thing is that this CLI tool is pretty good, and if you want to use this with another model, then you can define the base URL and model name, or you can also define that when running it as well. So, that is also kind of cool to use. I liked it and thought to talk about this as well, because it is kind of cool nonetheless. It is good, and you can give this a try and use it for yourself and see if it sticks for you or not. I hope XAI themselves also launch their official Grok CLI tool as well. I think that they'll do that with the Grok code model when that comes out. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.